Hey there, everybody. I'm ELH, your GM for this lovely adventure in Star Trek Adventures. Uh, well, this is the fifth session of Star Trek October, and uh, we're set in the year 2414 aboard a specialized starbase that is in the far reaches of the Sabine Expanse. If uh, this is your first time tuning in, uh, I'll let you know that this game is in the same quote unquote canon as Fenrir, Matahari, and Groundskeepers. But the key distinction is you don't need to have, have watched any of those games to enjoy this show. Really, this is kind of like a bottle episode, so you can just watch this one straight up and have a good time with it. But if you do want to catch the VODs, they are on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions like iTunes and Spotify. Uh, really, the only one announcement reminder I had this week is, you know, I'm still doing the Extra Life thing that's going through to November. And again, for the month of September, I'm donating 25% of my bits and subs to the cause, in addition to whatever you lovely people out there donate. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, the link should be below the stream. Uh, but with that said, let's just go around and have everyone introduce themselves, starting with the captain. Hey everybody, I am Dag. I'm super happy to be here. It's been a long week since Star Trek Day last week. So I hope you're in for a fun show. Um, yeah, thanks for being here. Yeah, so John here. Uh, I played Terrell. Uh, and don't listen to our GM. You should you should definitely watch those other shows. Um, just Just so you know. So he's, see you guys he's of course, saying that because he's on Groundskeepers, but, you know. <laughs> Bill and Ted in space. Yeah, that too. Uh, I think that's me now. Sorry. Yeah, that's you. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Matthew. I play uh, Lieutenant Jana, the uh, chief engineer on board Starbase October. And uh, yes, you absolutely should watch Groundskeepers and also Star Trek Hyperion. Also a good choice. Also a good choice. And hey guys, I'm Aaron. I play Dr. Dottig, the Tellerite Chief Medical Officer. Um, and this is the only place you can watch me on the internet. That's not true, but you'd have to subscribe. Stay. <laughs> wow. I'm Watney. Um, I play the Chief of Security, Empathic, Lieutenant Commander Stetco. And you can find me on Twitter at Doc Watney. Alrighty, and with a special thanks to the Bit Bomber, who's already going in prime form, let's go ahead and run that introduction. and welcome back everybody i see we have quite a number of you out there today so uh welcome hopefully you have a good time tonight but uh something i like doing for all my star trek streams is having the players do an opening log and stetco i believe you have that this week yes i do uh security chiefs log start date 91938.4 Deep Space October has had its share of excitement during its first few months, and not to jinx myself here, but it feels like things have slowed down. The citizens seem to be settling into their daily lives well after the initial adjustment period, and security operations have been almost rhythmic. Whenever I'm not busting petty thieves or other misdemeanors, I've been paying Kaja visits at her club on the promenade. Nice place, but the noise complaints make up about 30% of all the reports on the station. I've gently threatened an audit of her gambling operations as well. Something seems off with the latinum flowing in and out of the ledger. 
In any case, she's extremely stubborn and it's taken time to get through to her. I can only spend at the most half an hour in her establishment before the music and strong empathic sensations combined sour my mood. Additionally, the old man we met aboard the Howe during the tail end of the race has all but disappeared. There have been no other sightings or whispers of his whereabouts. As soon as he vanished, I lost all perception of his consciousness. The feeling I got from him was non-invasive, curious, but slightly irritated. He remains a mystery, other than he seems to have some attachment to Captain Kishwick. I'm almost certain he was the same man who visited the captain when he first came on board. Hopefully in time he reveals his true nature, for I am curious as well. End log. Very nice. And you may, of course, have one momentum for that lovely opening log. So... Uh, we're going to start our first scene in the penthouse bar and club down on deck. Uh, what do we say? 212, something like that. But, uh, specifically in the club is going to be Lieutenant Junior Grade Jana and Lieutenant Junior Grade Terrell. And you all are basically catching up and having a good time. So take it away. So anyway, I mean, what kind of pilot knows absolutely jack shit about their ship? I mean, you know, I understand he's a pretty decent pilot, but I don't know if he would know how to, like, even recap, you know, even the basic recalibrations. What, like reinitializing the warp impulse manifolds? I mean, that's... Oh, I'm surprised he could open the fucking door. <laughs> That, that, that might be a little bit harsh and you see that Jenna takes a drink very casually and normally he is like this bundle of nervous energy while on duty. Here he's actually legitimately relaxed. He is sort of like settled in that, in that boneless melting liquid cat way into his chair. And uh, yeah, I mean, the captain he's, he's competent in his, in his own field. I, he, he helped you out with that torpedo cockamamie scheme you came up with. Um, yeah, but God, I had to remind him three times what button to push. I mean, well, in any case, it worked out well. Um, I missed you there, but, you know, it is what it is. You know, I, I thought you needed a navigator, not an engineer. And uh, you saw how many shuttles I crashed in, like, basic flight training. So that's that, that probably wouldn't have worked out too well. Uh, you know, and, and that's where I thought it was going originally, too. I thought... You know, a, a co-pilot would actually be really good to have along. But, you know, it kept coming up that we would have to have some sort of engineering. I, I don't know. I don't. I, I, I just I, I just don't know. Look, I mean, you won the race. That's what really matters, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's kind of kind of cool to win a race with a handicap. I think you're being a little bit harsh on the captain. I mean, didn't he give like some kind of tremendously inspiring speech to begin the entire race? Like when it comes to like captaining and like, you know, command functions, the guy's awesome. I'll, I'll give him that, you know, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's like, I don't know. It. It's just, it's just different. Well, let me ask you this. You have, I guess, a bit of a tense relationship with the captain. I, I really appreciated his support thus far. He doesn't, again, know anything about engineering, but I mean, he just listens to whatever I tell him. So that's, that's nice. Um, but does this compare to your previous captain? I mean, you, what was the ship you served on last time? Oh God. Uh, well, you know, a lot of stuff happened there and you know, I'd rather not really dig into it too much but suffice it to say i was lucky to be on second shift that day yeah well uh, i know where that's coming from i mean you heard what happened to my old ship the mm -hmm. sean invasion uh but you know you, you you gotta get those things off your chest you gotta you gotta talk to somebody about that eventually there's nobody here to talk to well, thanks. That's that's. Well, I, I mean, really appreciate that. That's that's. Yeah. I, you, know, I, you know what I mean. Well, I guess, but I mean, there must be somebody on board a space station with what, like, two thousand people. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, I've I've heard we have a 
a counselor somewhere. I I, I might stop by. Look, I, I I took a little time off after that encounter with the Shan. I mean, I you need to take care of yourself first. You're not going to be a a good pilot or an engineer or anything if you're not in the right headspace. I, I took a long weekend. Well, you know, those kind of helped me. I, 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 you know, back in the academy, I really appreciated that. Got me out of the books. Uh huh. Got me drunk a couple of times. That that I didn't appreciate because of the hangovers and stuff and uh-huh. the, the earrings that I woke up with. Well, you know, I think you know, the earrings are really smart. Um, it's really, it's really a shame the one tattoo you did get. Nobody's ever going to see. Well, no, I, I do have fur. You know, yeah. so. Well, well that. that you were so upset with that bald patch. How long did it take to grow back in? It's still kind of coming in a bit, you know, thin. But well, th- th- we we have good doctors. I, mean, I can maybe get that looked at someday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, and don't even get me started on the security chief. Okay, well, she hates you, but that's not unusual for security officers. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, there's a great, there's a great trick in dealing with those uh, Betazoid people. Well, I mean, unless you're like a Ferengi or something, I don't know what you're talking about. No, what you, what you do is you just keep, you, you keep thinking of like a really inappropriate thought or uh, a really happy thought or, you know, just something, you know, because if you think the right way when you're dealing with them, it's almost like you give them one of those earworms that they just keep thinking about all day long. It's great. It's great. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, you do realize that our security chief is an empath and not a telepath. So I guess the emotional thing works, yeah. but uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, what you're talking about really is kind of like a, a Vulcan mental discipline, wherein you block your surface thoughts using a, I don't know, some kind of like, mental trick right like i don't know counting oh. cards in your in your brain uh well i didn't know it was it was vulcan or anything i just started doing it it's it's what got me through the uh mandatory uh counseling session that i had oh did oh. you ever get did you ever get your physical or were you able to get out of it uh yeah you know i i i stopped by with dr datig he's um I mean, he likes the Tastar Tartar, which, by the way, you really should try. I, mean, I don't know if you'll if you like the, the Taspar eggs. They're they're like those wormy little things with one eye that the Cardassians don't really like, but they serve them anyways. Cardassians are weird. No, no, no. But thank you. Thank you. I, I still can't get over the alcoholic milk product. You know, who's to say mixing milk and alcohol is a bad idea? Like that's that's kind of like culturally imperialist on your part if you want to say that other races are wrong for, for, for you know. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. And and aren't you the the guy who said that alcohol makes everything better? Yeah, I mean, I guess it does because I I hate milk to begin with. So. Hmm. 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 All right, so we have our moment there, and I was going to inject Kijwick, but I think that was a lovely scene in and of itself. So we're now going to go to sickbay, and this is one of my anticipated scenes for the evening, so bear with me. So Dottig, it's the start of Alpha Shift. You've just walked in. <coughs> mm-hmm. Nurse Chan greets you at the door, says, hello, doctor. Nurse Chan, Ractigino in hand. Mm-hmm. You proceed into your office. You sit down. There are no reports waiting for you. There is no Jenkins at the door. Everything is normal. Abnormally normal. Tap his comm badge. Uh, Notice Chad? Uh, Yes, sir. Is there nobody here to see me? No, sir. In fact, your 1, 2 p.m. appointment canceled. Terrell. Well, very good. 
I'll just be in here uh, reading re reports, maybe maybe writing something. I don't know. Uh, seems a little strange in the past few months. I've gotten used to people, well, being hurt or sick. I mean, I'm it's... sure if you wanted me, I could call up Jenkins and ask him to dislocate his arm again. I'd appreciate if you didn't. Also, I'm going to want him to have a full psych workup. He seems to have a notion that uh, pain is good and makes you stronger. Oh, right. This is this is a uh, a non-Undine thing. Got it. Yeah, uh, I will schedule an appointment for him, sir. Right. Um... Also, if you could uh, please make a note that uh, the next time Lieutenant Jana is in sick bay, uh, prescribe him uh, regular treatments of uh, anticortisone. Uh, yes, sir. What dosage? Oh, 20 milligrams should suffice. It's quite high, sir. Is there a problem? Well, I've been... Trying to find a uh, biological reason behind a certain problem that he's having, and I believe it may be due to stress. And I think if we can find a way to bring his cortisone levels down over time, the problem should uh, clear itself up. Doctor, you're not talking about Cation pattern baldness, are you? I'm sorry, nurse, I cannot discuss this on the grounds of doctor-patient confidentiality. Of course, it was rude of me to ask. I'll, uh, but I'll get but, that but yes. ready. Excellent. Thank you. And he'll just sort of sit there drumming his fingers on his desk, like almost in a insanely bored uh, kind of way, and then he'll sort of tap his combat say a uh, computer location of lieutenant terrell lieutenant terrell is in penthouse he just without a word gets up and leaves sick pants as a nurse i leave everything here in your capable hands i shall return shortly uh yes sir uh where are you going in case anyone comes calling I'll be in Penthouse. Really, sir? You told me the other day that you hated that place. I do. Oh. It is pretentious, pedantic, all at the same time. Have... You'd honestly have to be a moron to enjoy the place. I... Okay. Um, Have a good time? It's uh, It's not a social call. Oh, before I forget. And he's going to grab a medical track order. I'd like you to roll me a challenge die, please. Oh, don't blow up. If you roll an effect, it blows up. Because that's what? how we're rolling. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So it just so blows you... up in his hand and yeah. his face just... He's, uh, he, he looks calm because he's just absolutely livid. And uh, he slaps his comm badge against his uh, computer. Location of Lieutenant Jana. Jana is in penthouse. Very good. Then I shall kill two birds with one stone. Perhaps literally. And he will leave sick bay. <laughs> Very nice. And as that's transpiring, we're going to go up to the captain's ready room where Stetko and Kijwick are having a conversation. Uh, hi, sir, I think we should assume. Okay, first GM, a little bit mm -hmm. of context. Yes. Do we know that the Takan, that this is a Takan? Oh, that uh, the old man is a Takan. Do I know that they've been mentioned in regards to him, but do we know, like, in character that? Yeah, yeah, it was something that came out in character uh, last session. Uh, the whole facility that. Um, the old man was in was to con in origin. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Um, sir, I think we can assume with almost 
a hundred percent certainty that this is to come, but we need to explore other options just to be sure. I think that's fair. Ruling out what it cannot be would help. There were approximately 12,472 instances in the database that this this entity could potentially be other than Takan, but I've narrowed it down to about a dozen. Good work. That's a lot. What do it's you have? A, it's a big, big galaxy, sir. <laughs> Uh, well, it could be a Q. Let's hope not. Pass. Okay. <laughs> um, I came across this one, a Trelane. Have you heard of Trelane? Um, something in at the Academy about Kirk encountering some super powerful kid that had a machine that gave him uh, crazy abilities. Okay, okay. Childlike, it says here. That makes mm. sense. Probably not. He seemed pretty mature, I would think. Next. Uh, a Dowd, maybe? Not purple um, enough. Not purple enough. <laughs> um, no, the, the last encounter we had with the Dowd was almost 50 years ago. Let, let's hope he's keeping to himself. Fair enough. It's my job to assume people aren't keeping to themselves, sir. If I had your job, I would say the same thing. Um, here I'm seeing an evolved Zalconian. There was one here named John Doe. Something aboard the uh, Picard's uh, Enterprise D. That does ring a bell. Okay. Uh, caretaker, plausible. Again, not purple enough. Um a preserver? Maybe? Hmm. Preservers are almost mythological, with the exception of some very rare scattered ruins. True. Although, considering the Chakan are over 600,000 years old, they're almost mythological as well. True. A traveler? Probably not. I, I, could, I could sense his emotions, so. We could just contact Tau Alpha C and see if they have anybody in the area. That's true. I think we can rule that one out. Um, do you think he could be a prophet? Or is he not possessy enough? I wouldn't even want to think about what that would mean. All right, that's fair. But we could check with the Bajoran shrine on the station just to see if uh, there have been any unusual activities. All right. Uh, then I also have here... Uh, a Shakari entity, something about the galactic core. <laughs> oh, wow. You really dug deep. Mm. Um, it's my understanding that that entity was either killed or abandoned on the planet that Kirk found it. All right. Uh, check that one off. Sounded kind of mean. Um, an or Organian? Is that how you say that? They evolved to get rid of pain or something like that. The Organians, they're in uh, a command file that I have. Um, Potential. Immediate, yeah. If, if, if it turns out to be an Organian, we have to contact Starfleet Security immediately. All right. Uh, and last, I have a Halan and Psycho Projection. I've never even heard of that. What is it? Uh, the Halanans are capable of a kind of telepathy, which involves projecting uh, an, al an alternate personality that seems real, but they can disappear just willy nilly. So I thought I would include them to make sure that we didn't miss out because uh, we didn't miss anything because he tends to just, this guy that you keep seeing tends to just poof. That's a good note. Do you know if we have any Halanans on the station? Uh, I can check. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like consult her pad. Yeah, I would say that's a pretty comprehensive list of the possibilities. Um, Takan is still at the top of the list, but the research is sparse. 
All right. Well, I'll keep looking into it, sir. And if you have any other sightings, please let me know. Will do. Dismissed. And it's uh, good timing, Stetko. As you stand up, you actually get a chirp at your communicator. This is Stetko. Uh, ma'am, we have a strange disturbance on the promenade between two cations. Um, I think you're going to want to come down and handle this one, ma'am. Uh, sure, right away. She'll nod at the captain and then, uh, briskly walk to the promenade. All righty. So as you're walking, we're actually going to cut back to penthouse. And in walking the front door is none other than the good doctor. And of course, doctor, when you come into penthouse, it's that same gaudy pink that you hate, including the pink haired Vulcan behind the counter. And she gives you that look that just makes you like hate everything about her. It's like, you're just, you, you hate this place. And uh, hate is not even like a strong enough word. He's just gonna shake his head, lock eyes with the Vulcan and mouth the words, you're a disgrace. <laughs> She actually mouths back. I can read lips. And Dante goes, I can't. Noted. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then, yeah, then he just goes, what? <laughs> she just sighs and points up at Jana and Terrell as if knowing why you're here. And yeah, and, uh, uh, Jana and Terrell, I'm going to give you a chance. Only one chance, but a chance. I need you to do a insight and a security Difficulty of two for each of you. And if you pass, you've noticed Optic. If you don't, well. <laughs> and no, survival does not count as a focus. <laughs> I'm going to spend my determination. <laughs> uh, using some rules or some rules can be bent, others can be broken. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. Let's let's roll with this. All right, so that's two free successes. I'm just going to roll straight, and I assume that my improvisation focus does not apply. You know what? I'll give it to you. Why not? All right, so hey, two successes. Now does uh, Terrell roll any complications? He does. Oh, yeah. Thank you, R and Jesus, for blessing <laughs> us this day. Uh, so that's three successes, so you're actually up to two momentum total. So... You both notice Dottig, and Dottig, you notice them noticing you. And the complication, Terrell, is that as you maybe start to stand up and make for the exit, you trip over some chairs and end up in a tangle of furniture. Uh, as I'm assuming Dottig storms up the stairs to the second he's, level. Nope, he's not storming up the stairs. He's stalking up the stairs. Ah. And as he does, you can see that he's rolling up the sleeves of his uniform. Uh, uh, uh. Doctor, I thank goodness you're here. I, I, could you? I mean, look, Jarl. I mean, Jar Jarl is is he's hurts. Doctor, do, do doctor things, please help. Very eloquently put, Lieutenant. I know the look of a predator when I see one, so I'm flight or flight response kind of. I resent that notion. I'm a vegetarian. I didn't. Were you just talking about the Tastarg Tartar yesterday? They don't count. They haven't come out of their eggs yet. I interesting philosophy. Not that I'm going to question it. While while uh, while his good buddy uh, Jana is <laughs> providing the uh, distraction, as per uh, normal, uh, Terrell's going to try to escape. All right. Uh. Let me ask this. Do you want it to be funny or do you want it to be serious? Uh, he he is basically going to try to grab a hold of a banner and swing like a freaking <laughs> pirate <laughs> okay. down to the first floor. <laughs> okay. The, this is something that can be attempted in Star Trek Adventures. Of course, I'm not just stalling for time to figure out what the hell that should be a task. Uh, let's call this a fitness and a con, please. I'm gonna spend some threat though to make could it a I, difficulty of three. Could I uh, con convince you in some uh, daring? Uh, I'll give you daring, but I'll make the complication range larger. All right. All right. And con submit. Uh, definitely gonna spend uh, that one of those uh, <laughs> momentums. All right. 
because you know it's the way to do it and um <clears throat> Uh, actually, I'm going to spend the two momentum, but I'm going to give you one threat for the first die. As you can tell, very serious uh, task being at mm -hmm. hand here. Very, very serious <laughs> task. Mm -hmm. And um, sadly, I do not believe I have a focus. <laughs> no, after all that, I don't think you do, unfortunately. All right. Hey, you get three successes, but let me double check that zero. Uh, yes, that zero is enough for a complication. So here's what happens. <laughs> so, uh, Terrell, you leap up as Jana is doing the distraction and you look around and you realize that the second floor stairs are not a viable exit. So you look across looking for anything and you see a banner, uh, depicting, uh, a house of some Klingon that, uh, Valon has for some reason or another, but, uh, you take your chance, you do a flying leap over the banister and grab onto the banner and you coast down to the floor but the problem is when you hit the floor the banner comes with you so now you're on the first floor but you're covered in the banner and you're like flailing around trying to <laughs> otherwise get out of it and this oh, is of course actually hold on one second i'm oh. gonna uh, I, I don't know if it's too late um i just realized the reason i spent that threat was because i have bold con so I could potentially re-roll that one. <laughs> well, well, we'll save it for other. You, you got to remember okay. it in the future. Yep, yep. But yeah, but I will. So... But I will roll for my uh, other thing. Hey, look, you more get a threat, threat for me. <laughs> so Terrell, you're down here now, covered in the banner. Valon is shouting something at you, like, "What the hell are you doing in my club? Uh, what, what is what is John and Dantic doing when they see and hear all this?" So he's gonna watch that. He's gonna watch the banner come down. He's gonna take a look at Jana. Put his hands on the like sort of ominously on the table, lean in and go, don't move. And then he's gonna turn around and stalk back down the stairs. And I think you probably arrive right at the time that Terrell finally gets up from under the banner, and Terrell, you come out from under the banner right into Dante. Oh hey, Doc. Didn't see Lieutenant. you. There. So I'm obviously in good health. <laughs> Terrell I hate you but I need you to come to sick bay to make sure that everything is okay oh, everything's fine doc I, I, I have some shuttle maintenance to take care of high priority high priority shuttle maintenance listen um, what exactly did I, I mean, do I mean have to... you ever have you ever flown in a vessel with the captain he did some engineering work on the shuttle so obviously i have to go back in and fix it right um but you're not an engineer I, I, actually i double majored you double majored yeah you got the d double minus in basic field of medicine and you got a double major from starfleet academy well you know um I'm actually I'm actually really good at security too, if it matters. <laughs> but you know, who is it? <laughs> right, right. But um, do you know what? Do you know what I'm good at? Um. No. <laughs> Dautic actually begins to laugh here. <laughs> okay. All right. You know, it's hard not to admire that kind of moxie. I mean, you're actually... Well... I still think you're an idiot. Can I buy you a drink, but sir? Yes, but not here. So I tell you what. You perform your shuttle maintenance. At which point you report to sick bay for a physical. How about then we have a drink? All right. 
We'll have a drink after I get my physical. You can perfect. This is this is what I'm going to have to do now. Is bribe you with booze? Is that it? To get you into sick bay? Well, you know, I, technically, I'm bribing you with booze, sir. Well, I was thinking quid pro quo. Have you ever had uh, Timbiki Dark? Uh, can't say that I have. Well, you're in for a treat. I don't know many humans who can handle that drink. Well, there's always one. I guess we'll find out. And hey, if it goes sideways, at least you'll be in sick bay. All right. I'll be there after I do the shuttle maintenance. Yeah, on, I don't believe you. Uh, no, I, I will definitely be there after I do the shuttle maintenance on shuttle 37. There is no shuttle 37. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. And um, enjoy the rest of your leisure time. Please tell Jana that he can move now. Uh, and you'll see Jana leaning over the edge. Uh, I, I have really good hearing, so I, I, I got that. And uh, thank you. I was actually going to ask before you left. So uh, it's really much appreciated, sir. Thank you. So Terrell takes the uh, banner and kind of puts it over him like a cloak and walks back up the stairs. You know, I had to be careful who saw you wearing that like that. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a doctor and an anthropologist and a very intelligent person. Your superior officer. Um, you, Vulcan woman. My name is Vlad. Yeah, I don't care. Put uh, put their drinks on my tab, please. Are, are, are you sure, sir? They, they have quite a tab. Yes. All right, I'll be... And she pulls out a pad. That will be four bars of latinum. <laughs> wait, I'm, wait, I'm sorry. Bars? Yeah, like I said, they've been racking up quite a tab. Hey, <laughs> hey, huh? hey, 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 Jonna, the doctor just paid for the month's tab. <laughs> He'll just, uh, he'll just stick his thumb out and press it out to the pan. Your magnanimity knows no bounds, sir. Thank you. That is, that is, I, that's, I'm really touched. That you're shut looking up for young going officers. To, you shut up right now, or you're going to find out the bounds of my magnum, magnum, whatever you said. <laughs> oh, and I think that's where we're going to transition scenes to possibly an even funnier one. So we're going to shift to uh, quite literally the opposite end of the station to the main promenade. And uh, in the promenade are two Cations that we saw uh, last episode. Uh, this is the same Cation couple that participated in the race uh, earlier. So let me actually refresh this for the stream. But uh, while I'm refreshing for the stream... Uh, Lovecraft, I'd like you to take one of the Cations, and then Dag, I'd like you to take the other one. So work that amongst yourselves, who's taking which? Which one's the... Uh, this is the, the, the Cation racing couple from the last episode? Yes, yes, that's them. I'm so the wife. You're so the wife? Alrighty. Uh, we'll say that's uh, Perone. And to sort of set the scene here, Stetka, when you arrive... Uh, the two lovebirds are doing that cutesy couple thing where they're fake fighting while flirting with each other. And it's making everybody in the promenade very, very queasy and awkward. So let's, let's no, hear a little bit. I'm that. telling you, if we redo the our quarters in this industrial silver, it's it's gonna be so resplendent. You you don't even know. Uh, you, you, listen, kitten. We've been over this. We talked about the decor that we saw in the Boreth Monastery. Remember that vacation we had? It was just about six years ago. You must remember the, the torches. They were delightful. Do you not remember the smell? There were 800 Klingon initiates at that monastery, and it smelled like gah every single day. Oh, yes, it did, but it was just the, it was the Klingons themselves. They don't bathe. The incense was lovely, but if you recall, you had to bathe like 19 times to get it all out of your fur. So don't complain to me about Borath. What are we even talking about? We're talking about th this the color of our quarters. 
it, it look the colors have to be coordinated with the decor so if we get the torches the 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 what was it the steel gray that you wanted that just it, it will clash horribly no this industrial steel gray look look how it makes my eyes shimmer it's uh, it it is just as beautiful as the day we met i love it when you're sweet talking well i love doing it Fine, we can get the torches. Um, oh, you, you, are we? Do we have to disable like fire suppression for those? You know, it's like the Luna class. These new star bases, it's all you know, temperature controlled by individual quarter. At least that's what that young, uh, that young, what was his name? That 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 young whippersnapper who does the engineering here. That's what he told me. Oh, that that cute little cub. Yes. Yes. He's so sweet, isn't he? Oh, uh, when his spots come in, he is going to be uh, 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 just a killer of 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 people and women. Yeah, well, you know, he, look at the size of his paws. He's and he's not done growing yet. <sighs> uh, I hate okay. to interrupt, but you cannot turn off fire suppression on this station. I'm sorry. Who are you? I'm Chief of Security Stecco. Nice to meet you, ma'am. What, but we, uh, we just, and it, uh. yeah, no, it does match your eyes. I, you know, but you got, you can't do this here. You're disrupting all the people in the promenade. Did you see what a good listener she is? The station just, it needs her. She is a jewel. She could hear me from half a league away. I'm sure of it. And, you know, as a beta said, she's so empathic. I mean, that, that, that's the kind of soft touch that you need for a star base like this one. You know, you have to empathize with the people on board. You get to know them and, and create a bond of trust, right? I agree entirely. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, I'm sensing an irritation <laughs> around me. Oh, it's pointed, not here. pointed at perhaps the location of which we're standing right now, so... I think that we're just, you know, we are debating the look of our quarters. And then you came in and we had just agreed on the torches with this industrial steel gray. And now you're saying we can't have that. And it's a dream. You see how you've upset my wife. I mean, that, I, I, you know, here okay. we were complimenting you. And we, <laughs> we, we, we had such respect for you, but uh, perhaps our initial assessment of you was wrong. I, this is this is conduct unbecoming of a Starfleet officer, I think. Look, I can sense, I can sense that you're upset, but um, so Stecco's going to look to the promenade to see if there's like uh, an establishment such as maybe Quarks where there's like hollow suites or anything like that. Is there any? Yep. There's anything? There's like there's causes right over there. Is are there like hollow suites and stuff? Oh yeah, the causes has hollow suites to spare. Okay, um, but uh, I'll be right back. So she's gonna, so she's gonna go step over to Kaza's, and surely there's some kind of like rental area for a there hollow suite is, that she but can let's find. actually play that out because we haven't really seen a whole lot of causes yet. Yay. All right, so as you walk in, the immediate thing that hits your ears, Stetco, is the loud bass. And you oh, can God. literally feel it in your bones and in your head as you uh, walk up to the bar, or at least the, the lower level bar, uh, where a Klingon woman, uh, Kaza herself, in that uh, classic sort of Klingon attire with sort of that open chest kind of uh, uniform that they have going on. Mm -hmm. um, but she looks eternally disgruntled uh, as if uh, she's not having a good time, but you know, hey Klingon, that could be a good thing. But uh, as you approach, uh, Kaza sort of sighs and says, no, 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 we are behaving right now. You can't be in here. Yeah, um, I'm here. Can I just say how low? Oh lovely you look today Kaza? what do you want lieutenant commander okay look i have a problem out on the promenade it's this couple who's arguing the yes they've been at that for two hours i know that's why i'm here can i can you help me out i need a hollow suite rental for the case distract them yeah to distract them they're arguing about their quarters colors 
And I thought maybe you had like some kind of interior design suite or something where we could stick them in there and get them off the promenade. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can make that happen. But uh, what are you willing to trade for it? Uh, well, how about we skip that ledger audit? Hmm? <laughs> a uh, presence and a security, please. Okay. Difficulty of two. Also, I hope the club music isn't too loud. I've been trying to adjust it so the stream can hear it. No, it's fine. What was it again? Presence? Uh, present security. Security. Um, Games of chance? I mean, technically, this is negotiation. That is a game of chance in my book. So, yep. sure, why not? Okay. Um... I'm a kind GM. Thank you. Yeah, so I think Kaza just sort of narrows her eyes and says, the ledger and the next three noise complaints. Fine. Ah, yeah. and she does one of those click on things where she grabs both your shoulders with her hands and she just sort of shakes you and says, I knew we had an accord. Yeah, uh, send them up to hollow suite number three. I'll have it ready for them. So she um, step back so, out to the promenade. So step back out to the promenade, kind of like super glad to be out of there because it's so loud. Mm -hmm. So I think we should just, I think we should just get those torches anyway. And if anybody shows up to the house, we can just turn them off. And you know what? We could use your skill with hollow programming, and we could create maybe some holographic representations of fire. Right? That would be like an art project for us. Yeah, but the emitters on the station are just, ugh, they're so, like, a decade ago. That, the well, P-47s are brand new, but they're so expensive right now, and I'm sure the station can't afford them. We have a nice little nest egg saved away. We could make a few upgrades. I could talk to that nice young engineer. He might be able to help us. You would get me a P-47. Oh, I knew there was a reason I loved you. I hope it's okay. a little bit more than that, but. Great news. Uh, I'm back and I got you guys a hollow suite so you can rearrange it and plan out your design in there. What do we need a hollow suite for? So you can, you know, like visualize your industrial gray with the torches. Now, are you suggesting that we have a, a lack of imagination? No, but maybe you could show me. <laughs> oh, oh, get your holo camera, dear. I mean, this is a wonderful opportunity to some, share some of our vacation photos from uh, Argalius 2. You remember that world? Oh, yes. The, the waves on that world, because of the double moon cycle, they get so tall. And they have this amazing surfing organization. Yeah. It's it's part of yes, their yes, ex yes, major that, exports. That, that, that it, museum exhibit on Jack the yes. Ripper, that that Jack the Ripper spirit that was on the planet. Oh yes, oh, that was oh, fascinating, yes. wasn't it? Mm. That confluence of Earth cultures and theirs. Uh, that 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 poor Earth engineer who who well, I don't remember his name. What was it? Shorty, I don't remember. But you know the. He was in that museum, and he was that that engineer on that ship from a long time ago. Yeah, what was it? The entire prize was it? The whole prize. Oh right, what a yeah, ship that must have been. Yeah, definitely a ship. Let's go, let's go. She's gonna like try and usher them with her <laughs> arms <laughs> in that direction. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> as as I stop laughing. We can try. Very handsy scenes. young woman. Do, but take your hands off me. Don't make me call your manager. What is his name? Captain Fizbin. She, st <sighs> she starts doing like a hover hand. <laughs> mm. Oh my I mean, God, that's, that's everything. I, you may have two momentum. That is everything I wanted out of that scene. So now we're going to transition to possibly another funny scene because that's apparently what we're doing tonight. Uh, so Terrell... 
you're not really repairing Shuttle 37, which doesn't actually exist, but you do somehow find yourself in the traffic control room uh, when there's a sudden beep at one of the consoles and the uh, red shirt uh, enlisted crewman that's at it uh, puts a hand to his ear, says a few things, then turns to you and says, oh, uh, Lieutenant, um, sir, you're probably going to want to handle this one. What's up? Uh, we have a Klingon captain that is having trouble talking with the station. He sounds very angry. Oh, God. Uh, um, oh, yeah, uh, sure. Um, where? What ship? And uh, what are you naming your ship there, uh, Klingon captain? Oh, it's the it's it's the freighter from uh, from the last time. So I may butcher this, but it's the IKF Nuktak. Oh, push. Also known as IKS, where is the bathroom? Yes. Oh, oh, that, that, oh, God. Um, all right. Uh, I'll, I'll take it. All right. So the, uh, the crewman hands you his ear set, and immediately you get an earful from the Klingon captain. This is insufferable. I demand access to your station now. All right. Uh, all you got to do is move to docking bay six. I have been trying to move to docking bay six for 30 minutes. All right. There's some sort of obstruction. <laughs> he kind of puts his hand over the, over the mic, but he could probably still hear it. He's, but he's like leaning over the red shirt. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. probably probably a keg of blood wine <laughs> uh yeah so um do you need help what do you think <sighs> all right um all right prepare for uh, a, a transport I'll, I'll transport over i'll transport over myself This is acceptable. All right. And he he chirps in. Uh, yeah, I, I need somebody to transport me over to the Klingon vessel that is uh, currently doing donuts outside the station. Uh, right away, sir. Um, you know what? I'm not even going to ask. I really don't care. And the transporter chief uh beams you away and since i don't have a klingon interior ready we're just going to go to theater of the mind for this one but uh yeah you beam aboard uh the iks where is the bathroom and uh cord tell us a little bit about the state of the interior oh it is about what you'd expect from a klingon waste ship uh, the insides are rusty uh the panels are grimy uh the helmsman is dead and uh, the smell is unbearable. Terrell looks at the helmsman. I, I think I found your problem. Yes. I was forced to vaporize him. Oh. Well, mostly. Yeah. Well, we called. Well, never mind. Uh, he slides the Klingon out of the way. Body uh, goes thunk onto the floor, sprays a little bit of blood. Okay, focus, focus, focus. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, he does a real quick, uh, uh, just a real quick uh, diagnostic to see what he's working with. Okay. Uh, roll me a reason and a con. Uh, let's say this is a difficulty of two. Yeah, reason. That's that's Terrell's strong suit. <laughs> mm hmm Uh you know what? And um let's see. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give you any threat yet. All right, so uh Terrell, you're looking at these controls. You're pretty sure you know what some of these words mean. It's all in Klingon. Other than that, um, you have little idea. Uh, I don't suppose you have a way to, like, 
change the dis displays, do you? Why? Oh, I, uh, I do not speak Klingon. Or read it, for that matter. What do they teach you Starfleet officers, anyway? How to come in first in a race? Hmm. <laughs> 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 And he uh, he starts playing around with some of the controls to get like a basic idea, like you know. Roll me a uh, roll me a challenge die. Don't roll an effect. You have one job here. All right, you didn't Ice. roll an effect. You send the shuttle into a tailspin, and the inertial dampeners are not working. Oh, please get the inertial dampeners back online. That's the only thing holding the septic containment system together. I, oh, don't and you have an engine? Do you have a human engineer? expression? No, we do not. We are Klingons, not engineers. Uh, Jonna. <laughs> uh, uh, Terrell to Jonna. Uh, yes. How are you? Are you concussed? Are you? Did you go to sick bay? Are you, you okay? Uh, actually, I'm on a Klingon ship. <laughs> Uh, and I could really use your help. Ship? You mean the, the piece of garbage that's... Why are you on that death trap? And in the background, you hear, What? <laughs> oh. Uh, what, what, what I meant to say was it is, it is a vessel that hauls garbage. Which yes. Is, mm -hmm. Yes. Much, much nicer. Uh -huh. um, I've got to try to park it. And, uh, well, it's in Klingon... They don't really have any inertial dampeners. Um, yeah, uh, and I think he's already killed his engineer and his helmsman. I only killed the helmsman. I never had an engineer. All right, so never had an engineer. Oh, and what do you want me to do about it? I mean, well, you know, I hate to, I'd hate to be out here dying alone. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, okay, uh, Lieutenant Jonna to transporter room one. Could you beam me on board the uh, Klingon garbage scow, uh, preferably to their engineering section, if possible? Um, sir, they don't have an engineering section. They're, um, well, a garbage scow. I, I mean, wherever the warp core is located. Right maybe, away, sir. Maybe and, it's uh, in their bathroom. I don't know. You you literally beam in right next to Cord on his chair. And uh, if you'll permit me to do a little bit of extra flavoring, uh, the warp core is literally under the captain's chair. Ah, um, yeah, so uh, it's, uh, how do I get at the warp core? Do I have to like, is it like one of those ancient earth trucks where you like flip off the top and then you get to the engine underneath it or? What? No. And Cord will just get up and lift his chair off of it. Ah, uh, thank you. Um, well, I'll flip out an engineering tricorder and try to diagnose the issue here. All right. Roll me a uh, reason engineering difficulty of two. Actually, no. With your uh, engineering tricorder, it's a difficulty of one. And uh, starship construction, would that apply? You know what? It would. I, I, I could give that to you. I'll, uh, I'll buy an extra die All right. as well. Wow, oh, four successes. Nice. Very nice. So that is a grand total of four momentum by my count. So yeah. Um well what do you want? Do you want the good news or do you want the bad news? Let's always go with the bad news. Bad news. Okay. Bad news. This warp core, if it goes to warp again, warp core breach. Instant fatality of the entire ship. Good news. You can get the inertial dampeners back online. Bad news. In order to do that, you're going to have to overload the warp engines for a little bit. See, bad news number one. Mm. Let's just say the oh. ship isn't really constructed very well. Okay, uh, so, Captain. Um, how attached are you to this ship? Because you could either die an ignoble death, or maybe we could leave the ship. Seems like it's one of those two options. 
die an ignoble death. I have a duty. You could say that again. Um, not helping, Jero. Not not helping. Please. Um, death look. in the line of duty is noble. It guarantees the path to Stovacor. Okay, I I don't even know what that is. I, I really because I don't know. So oh, hey, there was that bar not far from the academy called Stovacor. Oh yeah, so. I don't see how this ship is going to get you to, to that bar, but... Um... Stovacor is not a bar. Well, oh, it it kind of is, but not a regular bar. A, a, a better bar. Can you fix my ship or not? Yes, fine. I, I can try. If it fails, we all die, but hey... That, that's usually then we get to go to Stovacor. Look, I, I I don't really like bars. Most of that tab that at at Penthouse is really Jaro, not me. That, not that you know what I'm talking about, but uh, right? I do not. No. Okay. Anyways, um, as captain of this vessel, I order you to fix this ship. Yeah. See, you're not actually a member of Starfleet, so I'm not sure if you can really give me orders just as a matter of like procedural compliance. Because if you see, if you check, and he'll pull out actually a pad. Jonna, you check, Jonna, Jonna, no, no. And now, as he does now's that. Now's not the time. <laughs> as oh. he does that, cord pulls out a disruptor and says, well, do you see this? You make a compelling argument regarding procedural compliance. Uh, so I will just get to work on those um, in, inertial dampers. Um, just Jaro, if you could just try to make sure the ship doesn't blow up when I start rerouting power through the warp engines um, into the initial dampeners, it would be kind of helpful for us not to, to die. All right, I'll 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 assist you the best I can. And uh, Jaro's going to go over and uh, try to help out Jana. Yeah. And uh, I would like to point out that Cord has set his captain's chair down on the deck, so it's very low, but he still sits in it. Very nice. Very nice. So uh, I'll give you an option here, John and Terrell. This can either be a single difficulty uh, task, so a singular task with high difficulty, or this can be an extended task with a lower difficulty. Your, your call, boss man. Uh, let's go for the single task. All right. So uh, this is fun because now I get to spend some threat. So... This is initially going to be a daring plus an engineering. Now, with threat, I'm going to make it a total difficulty of five because I find it funny, like most things I spend threat on. Um, I'm also going to, because I don't see myself using threat for the rest of the episode, I'll also make the complication range a little bit larger, 17 to 20. Of course. But you would have improvisation as a focus, so there is small silver linings. Uh, just spend a lot of those uh, momentums there, buddy. Yeah, uh, it might be a determination type. Thing oh, it, it, yes, yes, it is absolutely a determination spend. So what I will do is uh, I will tap my value. Um, oh, let's go with an old classic. Uh, there's no one I'd rather get into or out of trouble with than Jaro Terrell. I think that definitely applies. And uh, I will tap. Let's see. So that's uh, four momentum for an extra two dice. To roll four? Uh, it would be three momentum for two additional. Well, wait, you spend your determination. So for two more die, it would be five. So you would have to give me the four momentum in one threat. Let's do that. Okay. And I'm just going to be there helping my good old buddy um, with his engineering task. Uh, so Terrell, why don't you do me a presence and engineering And yeah, no pressure here. Okay, let's check that zero. That zero is a 17, so that is a complication. <laughs> but that is five successes, six successes. All right, so you have six successes. So I think it's it would be funnier if Aaron came up with the complication rather than I did. <clears throat> oh. 
Okay. So what I would say is that they are successful in rerouting power to the inertial dampeners. So those come back online. Excellent. But not before a total failure of the septic containment system. Oh my God. There's there's shit everywhere. Like everywhere. The smell oh. alone. Like you thought the Cations were talking about the smell earlier. My God. No my. bother beaming back to the station. <clears throat> All right. Oh Tur Terrell's going to try to park the damn thing. All righty. So I now need you to roll me a uh, control and a con difficulty of two. Hey, I, uh, I, I told you to hurry. I, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you one threat. Uh, okay. Because I could, that way I can use my bold con. OK. And you said what? Control. Uh, control and con. Yeah. As that's going yeah. on, uh, Jana would jam his comm badge. Uh, Dr. Dottig? <clears throat> Dottig, here, what do you want? Could you prepare a, a decontamination room, please? A desperately needed, very, very serious. Yeah, I'm, ac contamination I'm actually going to be coming in for a visit, Dottig. <laughs> uh, very well. Thank you. All right. So yeah, That's... Terrell, with uh, four successes, you get uh, two momentum. Do you want to take it into docking room six, or do you want to take it somewhere else? Ah, uh, no, he's gonna he's gonna dock it, and he's going to uh, um, he's gonna set up a lock on it so it can't go anywhere. Okay. Uh, if you give me a momentum, no roll will be required. All right, have a momentum. All righty. And part of that momentum is Cord has no idea you just locked it. And, and Jonna, that's never going to come out of your fur. But, hey, thanks for the help, man. You owe me for this one, okay? I mean, yeah, oh, you, I, you have no idea. Oh, I owe you. I owe you. Yeah, you, you know you know what we're doing right after that deca decontamination shower? We're going to the transporter room, we're going to reprogram it, and we're going to make sure that that will rematerialize us without anything. I mean, it's, it, that'll take care of the problem. It's just going to decouple the Heisenberg compensators, reroute power from the warp engines. We'll, we'll be fine. No, All right. that, that's not where you're going. We three have saved this ship. A worthy, an honorable endeavor. I will toast with you over a barrel of blood wine. Hmm. So, yeah, yes, but we should get cleaned up first. But then again, going to the bar like this would probably get Stetco called on us. So, I'm not completely opposed to this, Jonathan. Who is this Stetco? Oh, the the uh, security chief, a a warrior. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Best on the station, actually. Let us go to this bar. I will challenge this Stetco. All right, let let let's uh, uh, we're what what's the what's the name of the other one? Not Penthouse, Jonna. Casas. Oh, all right. We're gonna go to Casas. All right. Um, transporter room, uh, three to beam directly to Kazas, please. Okay. I think that's where we're going to take our break so I can actually <laughs> breathe for once. Uh, oh we'll be back gosh. in, uh, about 10 minutes, everybody. Stick around.
back to <laughs> all right so how uh, many minutes do we have uh you have no minutes we're, back. we're live you're back we're, we're, we're back, back but that's it so <laughs> i uh i want to sort of set the scene here so as they beam away we cut to kazas again and stepco to say that you have been shown a couple's vacation in the worst way possible yeah, it just doesn't seem to end. Like, you, you try to excuse yourself a few times, and they just don't give you an opening at all. Oh my gosh, have you been to Earth? Honey, honey, show them show them the pictures of that bridge that we visited on Earth. Oh, yeah, the, it was the Golden Gate Bridge, I think. Such a, a marvelous architectural achievement of your people, if I may say so, you know, I've always respected your people immensely. And, and here, here you can see us 
Um, we were parasailing that one day. We got that nice young man to, to take that photo of us, remember? Yeah, he was such a sweetheart. Oh my gosh. I don't know how your people, and you're not, you're not human. I don't know how humans can live without so much fur in such a cold area. It's amazing. Yeah, it's such a robust, hearty pe people. Yeah. Uh, um, <clears throat> hold, excuse me for one moment. She's going to turn to the side, tap her comm badge and go, this is Stenko to Hatea. <laughs> and uh, Hatea starts to answer, but right about then, beaming in is the shit crew. So Cord, Jana, Terrell, just <laughs> covered in it. <gasps> We're under attack! And Perone will hide behind her husband. And uh, he'll just be sort of like clutching at his nose because of the Cation sense of smell. Oh my mm -hmm. god. Oh gosh. It's, oh my. Ah. This, it's, it, it'll be alright. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> so who's all coming? Who's all here? Uh, Cord is here. Terrell is here. John is here. You're here. The Cations okay. are there. Okay. She's gonna look at the Klingon, be like, and I then she's gonna libations. <laughs> you, you you require bathing. Is this some kind of biological weapon? We don't have anything. You can't mug us again. What are you two doing here? She's gonna All right, like, point to the, her two officers. These two are crewmen aboard my vessel. And they've acted honorably in the line of duty, and we require libations. Oh duty my is god! Right. Oh, Stenko, uh. I'm so happy, so happy to see you. And uh, Terrell's gonna give her a hug. Does Stenko let him hug? Her? <laughs> no. All right, we're gonna roll. We're gonna see if the the dice are in your favor. Stetko, you're rolling a daring and a security. Terrell, you're rolling a daring in security. We're going to do this the gentleman's way. No spending momentum and no spending threat. No determination either. It's just going to be a straight roll. If you have hand-to-hand -hand combat, it applies as a focus. I do not. What was it? the roll again? Daring and daring. security. Security. Oh, yeah! Oh, wow. So Terrell oh, has three. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, so unfortunately, Stetko, you get hugged. It's oh now all over God. you. What are you doing? Well, here, first of all, you know, you're always wondering how Jada and I get into so much shit. Well, <laughs> this is your answer. Oh, you know, oh, you poor cub. You I, poor cub. I, how are you ever going to get that out of your fur? I, I, I've got something planned with the transporters. Thank you, ma'am. That's very considerate of you, uh, Commander. Um, I, I'm sorry for this. I, it's just, this is not my fault. It really isn't. None of this at all. Um, also, Captain, please don't speak for me. I am not a member of your crew. We are not part of the uh, the Klingon Federation Exchange Program, so I, I can't actually... Insolent pa! You've been aboard my ship and accepted my orders. What, What are you if not part of my crew? That's an interesting way of perceiving the world that you have. I am glad that I don't share in it, um, but uh, look, don't you want to go get some, what was it, blood wine? By, by the way, is that made with real blood? Yes. That sounds amazing. Can you get me some too? Well, I've already asked this one. He'll motion to Stetco several times. I am not a bartender. I am chief of security of this station. Ah. And these are Starfleet officers, you know, the pips, you, the badge, the weird colors. You are Stetko. She's going to look at Jana like, what did I you I challenge say? you to Bahat Cool. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, you know, an angry chief of security is one thing, but have you met an angry Klingon woman club owner? Several. Right. Well, let me introduce you. She's going to try So you refuse and... my challenge, you coward. Hmm. Terrell's doing his best to cover his laugh or his smile. 
but he's having a hard time because he doesn't want to actually put his hand over his face. Mm-hmm. Okay, so does he have a weapon? Several. Huh. Is he wielding one at her right now? No. I also would just pause it. You are in a hollow suite, currently being shown an image of what? This Including decor is... This, this is nice decor. Uh, computer Batleth. And, uh, sure enough, the computer materializes a Batleth for <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Stetko. Oh, oh, Linton, Linton, it's, they're, they're gonna fight. Oh, I can't handle this without my smelling salts. You know how I get when fighting is around. No, it, you know, it's just like that time it's at, so. you know, Kronos, when we saw that tournament, the Batleth tournament, right? It's, it'll be okay. Those are it's rigged. Just, don't spoil the illusion. Of course, it's like wrestling. Of course, it's fake. Wrestling <sighs> is fake. That's what I was heard, told. Yes, uh, is it not? Computer uh, rep, uh, smelling salts, uh, cation, um, um, uh, recipe two, <laughs> and she'll take the bag that appears and just start huffing it. Very and, uh, good. Lieutenant Jono will actually just step up to Stetko. Uh, okay, listen, Commander, as you're fighting him, there's one thing you absolutely cannot do. Do not throw heavy objects at him. If he starts reciting poetry, leave immediately. He's defeated you. Okay. That's, that's, just, that's just, just something to keep in mind. Don't throw heavy objects. Okay, good to know. Why should she not? It's how they meet. Objects. Oh, I thought it's, they it's, like, it's a courting thing. I thought they bit each other. No, 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 no. It's it's, <clears throat> it's heavy objects and the poetry. If I if I could. <laughs> D yes. You're going to anyway. <clears throat> Mr. Jana, fetch me a batleth. Uh, computer, um, Klingon Batleth? Batleth appears in your hands. Um, and he will sort of gingerly hold it out to, uh, Captain Porch. Excellent. With an attitude like that, you'll go far in the KDF. Great. He's in Starfleet. Already. Well, everybody, what does the human say? Uh, everybody wants to trade up. I, I do admit that, you know, some of those new designs like the Negvar, you know, the variants, they, they're, they're interesting from an engineering perspective. The sheer size and magnitude of one of those vessels, basically a siege ship. How would you like to be aboard one of those as it depopulates an entire continent? You know, given the, the amount of energy that you can route through those disruptors, it would be more like depopulating an entire planet. But, you well, know, I didn't want to brag. I just... No, no, it's, it's an engineering accomplishment. It's it's quite impressive. But um, well, thank you. I, I don't think you really have the political clout to you know, offer me such a position, nor would I want to leave Starfleet, because I'm fully committed to seeking out new life and new civilizations and boldly going where no cat has gone before, I guess. I think there might be one some moment. new life in your. I think there might be some new life in your fur. It's it's entirely possible. Yes. Are you so, going to get shaved? I I hope not. Oh I, God! I I hope so. I just I, would you like know, to interject real quick. I have two threat remaining, and with the two threat, I'm going to spend. Captain Kiswick. You're in tune with the station. You know when Kaza's broadcasting a fight or a big game, you know, something like that. You get a notification that Kaza is currently putting, uh, or not putting, is currently accepting bets between a Cord son of Borched and a Lieutenant Commander Stetko. And it's also pay-per-view. Of course, the station commander, you get the pay-per-view for free. But you could tune in to see... Well, Terrell covered in shit, Jana covered in shit, Perone hiding behind her husband, Lenton doing something, and then Stetko and then Cord sort of squaring off with Batliths with one another. 
Ishwick uh, will be unknown to this audience, leaving his uh, his office in ops and heading for the nearest turbo lift to Kaja's. Uh, but while he does this, he will tap his communicator badge. Kishwick to Stetko. This is Stetko, go ahead. I see you're getting in a fight with uh, one of our Klingon couriers. Sir, he challenged me to a fight. You got this? Sure. All right. Kishwick out. <laughs> All right. And we return to the moment as I press the shiny red alert button because I've wanted to push it the entire session. So we are actually going to do uh, structured combat here. Uh, so Stetko, uh, Cord, I need to know which of you has the higher daring. Oh, bear with me a second. I will check Cord's sheet. Eight. Eight daring Cord's for daring Stetko. is 10. Then Cord <laughs> is going to get to go first. Oh, God, she's going to die. All right. Nah, it's, it's fine. You'll be fine. So... so this is going to be, Dante, what are you doing for your action? Are you coming in with a melee attack, like I'm assuming? Are you going to trip her up? Like, to, to describe what you're doing with your attack here. Uh, no, I think uh, the first is just going to be a, a series of just brutal uh, batleth swings to uh, to gauge Kord's enemy. Okay. Uh, this is going to be for you. This is going to be a daring and a security. Difficulty of one. Stetko, same thing for you. Daring security, difficulty of one. And uh, I have a focus in bladed weapons, so. Oh, yeah, that would apply. Uh oh. All right, so oh. you just need two successes, Stetko, and you will do a counter strike. I don't have a. I don't think I have a focus on this game, so chance counts again. No, unfortunately not, but you do have two <laughs> momentum you could spend. <laughs> um, Yeah, let's do that. We'll right. Spend one. Spend one. All right. And you get the two successes you needed. So Stetko, he's coming in from the left. He's coming in from the right. You block both by doing that upward jab motion. And then describe your counterattack. Um, she's going to try and keep it as nonviolent as possible, even though it's a bat left fight. So she's going to try and lock hit her batleth with his and push him back okay go ahead and roll me i believe it is a challenge die for you just one eight. Oh, eight. okay yeah Damn. how much stress does cord have uh cord has uh he should have Oh, hang on one second. It is... He's got 13. Then what happens is, Stetko, when you thrust and push with your Batleth into his, you basically cause his Batleth to slam into his solar plexus, and he goes out like a light. Like, he crumples on the spot <laughs> to the point that he is entirely unconscious. Oh, my God. <laughs> just hulked out. One shot him. Just Terrell, Terrell just goes... <laughs> Lenton, I can't handle this violence. Oh. And, <laughs> and she she faints. Oh, oh dear. And Lenton is going to immediately bend down and try to administer first aid to rouse her using the spelling salts, and then he'll turn his attention to the Klingon to see if he's Arda as well. All right. Does uh, does Lenton have stats? He does. Yes. Uh, roll me a uh, control and a medicine, please. Difficulty of one. That was a hell of a roll on eight challenge yeah. dice. Yeah, Dude, that, that was, was really good. That was and technically, good. that was with Vicious One. So that vicious was one, 15. Yeah. All right, hey, you get a momentum. So, Letton, you may choose. You may either wake up the Klingon, you may wake up your wife, or you can spend momentum and wake them both up. I'll spend that extra momentum, but I can't wake them both. <laughs> so, Cord, oh. you're on the floor. You have no idea how you got there. Lenton, you saved me. Why am I on the floor? She kicked your ass, bud. Yeah, Who she kicked, really did. Kicked by what? I don't own a mule, you tar kick. 
No, your your hindquarters. Your ah, a human euphemism. Oh, actually, he says ass in Klingon. It's one of the few words he actually knows. Oh, <laughs> right. She did. And he'll just sort of look at Stetko and say, "I have rarely met a warrior of your caliber. Will you share a toast with me as we formalize our courtship?" Uh. Maybe you should shower first. Uh, yes. Very well. I will return. And right as uh, Cord walks out, waiting on the other side is Kishwick. Ah, old man. Point me to quarters. Your goodness, you you absolutely need something to help you. The, 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 the bathrooms are, are are over there. I didn't Use say them bathroom. Now. I said quarters. I am not going to let you walk through this station. You know, on the Klingon homeworld, only cowards get so old. <laughs> Terrell's like behind it like oh shit <laughs> oh my god Stecco does she hear that I, I think you do uh, she's gonna step up and be like I'm gonna kick your ass again is that Something what on. you would say to a Dahar master you <laughs> slimy patak <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you. I am a little slimy uh, uh, Terrell's Terrell's going to use this to grab a hold of Jana and sneak away. <laughs> nice. And yeah. Yeah. That could definitely further. Happen. He's going to point to Stetko and say, as a human say, don't threaten me with a good time. Excuse we broke me, Matthew. You... We finally broke him. <laughs> and he's going he's gonna to shoulder his way past Kishwick. Kiswick Kis will not be touched by this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> uh, Stecco is going to take the bat left. If it's still visible it is. at this point, I'm just going to toss it to Kiswick and be like, I'm going to be in my office. Computer and program. And uh, the holodeck disappears in all of its matte gray glory with torches. Uh, Kaza? And I, Kaza I, comes storming up and says, What the? Why is my holodeck covered in shit? It's going to be cleaned, but right now, I need half a keg of your hoppiest beverage. This is coming out of your tab. I'm telling you this now. <laughs> I knew that. Good. Good. What are you Cations doing in here? Get out. Hey, look, we, we had this... this Get out! Week booked for... Commander Fisbin, I will not be treated this way. It, this is this is grossly inappropriate behavior from a proprietor of an establishment such as this. Do I look I'm like I give a shit? Do, wait, don't answer that. <laughs> Tonight's humor just... brought to you by the National Society for Colon Cancer Prevention. <laughs> not really, but that would be cool. <laughs> oh lord alright we're gonna shift mm -hmm. scenes finally we're gonna go to your office uh, Stetco which uh, waiting for you there is uh, not Terrell Terrell is not there and yes I know the set pieces look surprisingly familiar <laughs> uh, but waiting for you there Stetco is a Mr. Jenkins if I remember correctly so Mr. Jenkins uh, Stetco walks in I assume you have something prepared for this. Yes, uh, Jenkins is sort of leaning against the wall uh, gingerly, and he'll stand up at attention as Stetko walks in. Ah, Commander, uh, I was hoping you might be able to assist me in small matter. Um, uh, sure, Lieutenant. What can I do for you? Well, you see, uh, his pet. Yes, uh, my pet 
is missing. I have searched station far and wide, I think is expression, and I have not been able to find him. I hope we might use internal sensors to locate him. Jenkins, it's been a long day and, you know, haven't you, didn't you chip it? No, no, it's very small and fleshy. This, this wouldn't, this would hurt poor thing. Small and fleshy? Yes. He's not strong like me. He's weak. <laughs> she, she gets the mental image of like Jenkins walking a hamburger for some reason. <laughs> uh, strange image. All right, fine. Uh, sure, let's, let's go ahead and pull it up. Very good. Thank you, uh, Commander. I appreciate your, uh, uh, your assistance in this very personal matter. So Jenkins, for the audience and me especially, what are you looking for on internal sensors? I am looking for a uh, flying parasite from uh, the episode uh, Operation Annihilate from the original series. Oh. It is this small sort of uh, flesh-like, almost like an individual cell of a much larger collective consciousness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Maybe remembering that now. Devil. The, yeah, I, yes. thought, I thought is you were going to say is, a macrovirus. Yeah. Let me make sure I'm on the same page. That's the same episode where um, Spock shows off he has a double eyelid at the end because he was shown that really, really bright light and they discovered it wasn't the bright light that killed. Yeah. Yeah. I like where this is going. I like where this is going. Uh, let's see. So either Jenkins or Stetko, uh, one of you is going to lead this task. The other will assist. Uh, this will be a reason security, and I'll make the difficulty only a two. Uh, Starbase security systems. Most definitely would apply. Wow, good job, Stetco. That's already four successes before uh, Jenkins assists. There we go. So many characters. So it was uh, reason <laughs> and security? Yeah. Welcome to my life. I have so many windows open right now. All right. Hey, that's five total successes, which means you uh, are up to four momentum total. Yeah, you uh, you find the creature. You want to know where it is? It's in Kishwick's office above his chair. Oh, um. May we go to office and collect pet? He is very rambunctious little fellow. He goes he goes wherever he wishes. What is this? She's like reading the sensor logs. What do you have as a pet? Oh, is um his creature I picked up. I, I do not know name, but um he's very cute. It doesn't look cute. It looks like a looks like a looks like a flayed chicken. <laughs> No, no, it's very playful. It uh, it attaches onto back and uh, sticks its spine into, well, no, it's, uh, what is it, uh, stinger? Yes, this is word, into spine and then suffuses the neural system. It's like little kitten nibbling at fingers. Okay, computer, where was this located? The organism is located in Captain Kiswig's office. Uh, seal off the captain's office. There's nobody in there, right? So we are going to cut very briefly to the command deck uh, where Kiswick, you're about to walk into your office and the door starts to open and then it slams shut in front of you and you literally run into it. Computer, what's wrong with this door? The office has been sealed by order of Lieutenant Commander Stetko. Kishwick to Stetko. This is Stetko. Sir, we have a situation in your office. You're not in there, are you? Uh, no, I'm just about to get in there. Are you in there? Nope. We sealed it off. We'll be there shortly. Would, what is going on? She, like, is basically running there. So she, like, cuts him off. Okay. I'll I'll see her when right she gets now. here. 
Yep. So a uh, dramatically appropriate amount of time later, Stetko and Jenkins come running onto the command deck to see what I'm assuming is a very displeased Kishwick. Okay. better be good. Sir, Jeez. I can explain. Um, Jenkins here approached me as I was about to clock out for of my shift, and um, he said he lost his pet. We've determined that this pet is a dangerous flying parasite and it's located in your office. It's not dangerous. This is this is insult against Lenin. Look, Jenkins, I know you're like some kind of weird like super human that doesn't feel pain or whatever, but like these things cause immense pain to normal humanoids. Even Vulcans. No, no. This is this is not true. It's just playful. This I, I don't I don't just care what I don't care what this argument is. What is it? And get it out of my office. He is, On it, sir. He, he must be very afraid. He is hiding in office, like Captain does many a times. Excuse you. This is what office is for. Yes, you do not do security. You you stay in office while people do work. He delegates. This is why you're still a lieutenant, Jenkins. I am lieutenant because I am good at my job. I am satisfied with my position in life. That's rare. I hope to keep you here for a long time. Thank you, sir. I I intend to be here for a long time. In one Jenkins? piece? No. Uh, uh, well, one piece eventually. I mean, pieces leave, they come back. This is natural flow of life. Oh, Lord. And I tell you what, why don't we make that the final scene where Jenkins and Stetko go charging into the office and then the amoeba starts flying around and doing that fluttery sound. And you just hear Kiswick in the background just audibly like face palming or shaking his head. And, well, we'll just say the fate of Lenin, was it, is uh, going to be left up to the imagination. But that is where we will end session five. What did you guys think? I haven't laughed that, was, that hard in a long time. That was yeah. super fun. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, that was that was really good. No, hopefully, uh, hopefully it was just as much uh, fun for you viewers out there. Um, so I'm going to stop the recording here, but I do want you all on the stream to stick around because we are going to raid someone. Uh, so YouTube, thank you so much for watching, and bye bye YouTube.